I'm M.L. Jacobs, president of Jacobs Wind Electric Company. We are manufacturing our new 10 kilowatt wind energy systems in Minneapolis and now have them installed in 24 states and uh, also in Alaska and Hawaii. The uh, new plants uh, are larger than the ones we formerly manufactured. We started building plants in 1930 in Minneapolis and built tens of thousands of the three kilowatt size for farms and ranches between 1930 and 1960. And then we uh, sat down on account of the REA lines around the country that ended our ranch and farm business. However, eight years ago, we started to, to realize that there was an opening for energy and uh, started to develop a new plant here, which is a 10 kilowatt size, four times as large as the old plant. It uh, produces up to 2,000 kilowatt hours a month and more in windy areas. We have some of them in producing over 3,000 kilowatt hours a month. They can be used for electric heating and uh, electric uh, uses of the home. They float on with the high line. In other words, the high line supplies the current when the wind doesn't blow. The excess current is, uh, runs the meter backwards and gives the owner credit and then a few days later when the wind don't blow, he may use that current back from the high line again. At the end of the month, it's a net billing setup or system whereby the difference is all that is paid. If the wind plant carries his load, he pays no bill. If there's any excess, the power company pays him. And if he's little less, he pays a small bill. But the wind plant effectively reduces the peak load needs of the homeowner. When you have wind in the winter, and the thermostats turn up, the wind plant increases its output so that the, that owner doesn't have to need extra peak loads every time the wind blows in the winter time. It effectively reduces that. We have machines uh, that have been running for a good many years, some of our plants. We built one for Bridge Camp at the South Pole that ran 22 years down in Little America with no attention whatever. Admiral Bridge said it was the only piece of equipment that didn't give him trouble down there. And we have plants within 15 miles of Minneapolis that have been electrifying farms for 45 years and still doing a good job. So uh, we know that the new ones can be expected to do the same thing, only they're on a much larger scale. So Jacobs, you must not like Florida. You came back to Minnesota, huh? That's right. That's the place to build wind plants. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been reading about your exploits over the years yes <laughs> yes we uh, you're with so, control data are you associated with them or well you associated they, with you? they have a stock interest in our company yeah because yeah. i go down mm -hmm. the freeway down there and mm -hmm. i just see one mm -hmm. of the units running well around. see they bought a stock interest in our company my son and i are still running the company right. but uh we put one up for them so their engineers could understand the plant they have was a prototype that's already run in florida three years we put it up two years ago uh, for them. And now uh, we weren't in production yet on this new plant, but they could uh, check them out ahead of time. That would look like a small unit they have there. No, right? it's the same as this. Is it? Mm -hmm. Of course, yep. it's high up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Optical illusion. Yeah, there. it's the same. This, it has a uh, gearbox, it's a welded, what we call a weldment gearbox, because we weren't in production, didn't that? We didn't have the molds and casting. But basically, we had the same type of construction. You see this? See, this? Mm -hmm. These blades, when they speed up, they change pitch. And they neutralize themselves at a certain and they're at 25 mile wind, and the wind gets over over a certain speed, it falls right around sideways. Only one light. And then there's a snubber that brings it back slow; it just falls right back into the wind. The wind about 35, 40 mile an hour by any pressure on that. We have the alternator in here, and we have a big gear, ring gear, high point ring gear that drives it. What is it? What is like yearly maintenance on it? Well, you grease the turntable once a year with jerk fitting and two fittings here, that's all. There's nothing on the generator. There's no, that, the oil is synthetic and sealed for many years in the gearbox. You don't ever do anything with it. There's nothing on the governor's oil. And I have thousands of these governors running for up to over 20 years. We know they work. The yeah, same, I, same principle. I've been reading uh, some of the articles in Mother Earth and Organic Gardening about some of the units that have been running. In fact, when we were out Wyoming deer hunting about eight, nine years ago. 
we saw some <laughs> units out so, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the first time I got interested. Oh, in yeah. Yeah, they have to be above the tree line. Oh yes, they're, they're yeah. wind plant. They should be 40 feet above the trees. Because we use about 12 feet of the tower back down here with the blades, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the simplicity of it is all mechanical. There are no electric contacts. We have no, net, there's no collective range of brushes in the entire system. And you've main, you maintain pretty much a three-bladed system. Oh yeah, so you, can't, you can't balance anything else. There's no way you can balance a two-blade. You can't yaw it. We developed, we learned that 50 years ago when we developed the first, we built the first, my brother and I, Joe Jacobs and I built the first three blade wind plant on our ranch in Montana. We used the Model T Ford River Axle and had a generator in the tower 50, in 1925. We put out 10 of them on neighboring ranches that works good before, after four years of testing. So we sold the ranch, came to Minneapolis, started building them in 1933, uh, 1931. And we built them here as you probably know for about 30 1950 years. 1950 or something like that? Or? 1960. 1960. We, we quit 1960. We built them nearly 30 years ago. You were just ahead of your time. Well, yes. Well, we, coming the, back again. the reason we quit building, of course, was the government building the free high lines, REE lines to the farmers. And they went all through the ranch country, out the western states in Arizona, New Mexico, and Nevada and what have you. And finally by 1960 there wasn't any any areas that didn't have uh, high lines in them, so we just had to shut down. But eight years ago, my son and I decided that the energy situation was developing, we started to develop this plant. We've been about eight years developing this new plant. Okay. So now, uh, the Coda County, how are they, uh, they're just showing the, the, the Coda County or the uh, people we, here? Or? We have, uh, oh that's our, they're our dealers for the Coda County, they're helping. We have different dealers every day from all over, from Wisconsin and Minnesota are in here every day helping man the exhibit. These, uh, these fellows have uh, plants up there. We've got four or five of them. Alternators are all pretty much the same. It's the towers that's the yeah. difference? Yeah, tower heights are different. Tower height, but the alternators are These are identical. The top section, we just raised the Top heads are all the same. That's the same, yeah. Now that's... Okay, it was nice meeting you. Your name again? Chuck Marquardt. And where do you live? Uh, Brooklyn Center. Oh, I've Brooklyn? got a place up north that I'm considering up right now. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, uh, I'm in yeah. some pretty deep woods. Big literature. Did you leave your name right. there? So we can... Very good. Mail. Okay.